Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performance Performance Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performers Podcast. I'm your host, Thor Conklin, and today we have Matt East. He is a high performance and productivity coach who loves helping others, working with great people. He's worked with clients in over 30 countries, including the many brilliant artists, authors, entrepreneurs, and business professionals. He's also a host of two podcasts. I don't know why you would ever start another one after doing <laughs> one. Uh, so you got to be a little crazy. But you know what I love about today's uh, episode is is that you and I are in the same business, which is really yeah. Cool. And I know there's a lot of coaches and a lot of consultants uh, that are listening out there. And there's a lot of people. Matter of fact, I just had a phone call about 20 minutes before I got on this call. Yeah. Um, Called in, wanted some coaching help. Was not an ideal client for us, uh, which I told him. I got. Uh, First of all, if you, if you are a coach out there and you don't have a niche, you don't know what that is, figure that out because uh, rich does not rhyme with niche. If you're <laughs> rich, you get rich. Um, you've got to figure out what market you're going to serve. And um, after telling him that, you know, he really was not an ideal client and I could not best serve him, uh, he said, hey, you know, I've been thinking about going into the coaching business, uh, you know, and it seems like it's the, the, the thing to do nowadays. So how did you get started on your journey? Oh, that's a great question. So um, I just knew I wanted to coach. Like I wanted to coach. There was no, there's no like maybe about it. There was no like hesitation. I had worked at a startup uh, for about eight years. I was like the four fifth employee. And when I left, there were around 350, I think. So I saw a lot of growth and experienced a lot of, uh, amazing things with that. But I just knew like I wanted to do something bigger and serve people at a higher level. And um, when it made sense to leave that business, I, uh, I took the opportunity and this is it, man. There's no, there's no plan B for me. It's not like I think I might want to be a coach or like I think coaching might be what I want to do. Like, no, the uh, all other paths have been uh, cut out and this is it, baby. I love it. I've been doing it for a few years now. I'm a productivity coach. That's what I call myself. And um, I work with a lot of clients because I do uh, most of my coaching is all virtual. It's uh, all um, it's all digital. And I certainly meet with clients one on one through uh, Skype and through phone calls. But most of it is through habit based uh, building. And that is done digitally over uh, applications. So. Oh, interesting. Explain that a little bit more. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if you've ever read like the power of habit or yeah. yeah, Or, um, James clear has a, just a fabulous book out called, um, uh, what is atomic habits right now? It's unbelievable. If for those of you who are, haven't read that and you're interested in high performance, man, read, uh, read atomic habits by James clear. It's amazing. So, you know, I started my coaching practice. And then I started to read all uh, about all this like habit building and how powerful that can be and how uh, it can be life changing. So I had just left a software company. That's what I did. I was in tech software and um, I was on the leadership team, but I definitely understood the power of scaling things through software. And I thought, man, I'm going to go out, I'm going to build software and I'm going to start coaching people and checking in with them every day and seeing how they're doing. Cause I was coaching kind of higher in a little more pricey coaching. I had like five, six, seven clients at a time. They were paying me somewhere between like a grand or two a month. I would, you know, we meet weekly or every other week or monthly, depending on what they, uh, what they wanted and what their budget could afford. And then, uh, but I was kind of a mystery between me touching base with them. And then like, two weeks would go by or a week would go by or a month would go by. And I had no idea what was going on in between those touches. And that's when I decided, you know, I was reading the power of habit and reading um, atomic habit. And I thought, man, I'm going to, I want to build some type of application. Well, I started to do some research on it and there was already a platform out there for it. It's called coach.me. And I started to run all my clients pretty much through this uh, digital coaching application. And uh, it has changed my life because 
you can really get some reps, some coaching reps, uh, you know, instead of coaching five or six people at a time, you know, there's been times when I had way more than that. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's way more, way more frequent touches, but kind of less, um, intense touches. Whereas you might be on prior, I was doing like one hour calls. Now I won't, I don't do any one hour calls. I do 30 minute calls at tops. And most of my coaching is done through trying to build habits through that digital platform. And that's what I do. Interesting. So how does, how does it work? I'm not familiar with the uh, coach stop me. Yeah, no, people decide what they want to pursue. So I coach one thing. It's basically setting priorities for your day. So you, I'm all about getting clear and clear focus on what you actually want and then taking massive action to it. I've heard a ton of your podcasts. It's right in line with what you're thinking. We're, we were, uh, I don't know, we're cut from the same sheet. So um, it's, it's uh, you sign up and then you just start basically collaborating with your coach every day. So my, uh, my clients basically send me proactively each morning or uh, prior to them going to bed or wrapping up their previous day, uh, what they're going to focus on the next day. And um, just having clarity and knowing what your priorities are for that day, as you know, I mean, that's half the battle is knowing what the heck you're going to do. And uh, so um, that's it, man. It's uh, it, you know, I, I work with a lot of my clients then graduate into wanting to have conversations with me so we can do deeper dives. And, and actually about half my clients now, it's, it's kind of an elevated, it's not just digital coaching. There's an actual uh, one-on-one uh, component over the phone or over Skype. And, uh, but that's it, man. It's all about getting clear. I mean, I'm, I've heard you say it time and time again about, you know, knowing what you actually want. And if you don't know, figure it out because that's half the battle. And uh, so we work on uh, one, getting clear on that bigger vision and goal. And then two, uh, deciding what those priorities and milestones are that we're going to work towards uh, every day and in, uh, in, uh, hunting that, that big goal down. So uh, that's it, man. It's it's as simple it, it, as that. Everybody wants to make it more difficult. You know, it, it, you know, what's, what's the missing factor? What do I, what, what do I have to do? Get clear and just start moving. That's it, baby. Right. All right. And, and fail along the way. Well, you're going to learn one way or another. If you, if you, you know, people say, well, I don't know if I'm going to like doing this. Well, start, try baby. Cause there's no other way to know. Like you can either just keep spending years not knowing, or you could take some action and pivot along the way, which is totally allowed, totally allowed. You got to. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. As a result of not knowing how to do it. And then I always say, look, you were born to, able to do one thing, breathe. You yeah. can poop and pee correctly. Yeah. We could breathe. That's the only <laughs> thing we had down was breathing. Yeah, and yeah. Oh. Came as a result of trial and error. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Adults and it's like, Oh, I don't want to try. You know, I might fail. Well, I got news for you. If you're not in the game and you're not failing, it ain't working. You're not doing, you're not going, you're not growing. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's big. You know, I, it reminds me of a story. I was onboarding a client. I, I actually, I wasn't onboarding them yet. I was just meeting with them. I said, you know, what do you want out of this whole thing? And they're like, really, I, I got to get some clarity on this and I need to do this. And I really think I need to this is what I want to accomplish in life. So he goes on, he outlines a couple of things and I'm taking notes. And after about uh, an hour, him just going on about, you know, what he wants to create. So I said, if I heard you correctly, and all I did is read back, I wanted to make sure I understood him correctly. All right. You want to do this. You want to do this. You want to learn about this. And, and you know, there's one other thing. And he goes, oh my God, you're brilliant. He goes, yes, that's exactly what he goes. <laughs> oh, he goes, I'm hiring you. I didn't say I didn't say anything other than yeah. just kind of gave him back. He just got clear. Yeah. I, he questions. He answered his own questions, which, which of course coaching is all about. Sure. You know, really, what we do sometimes we coach. You know, where we're asking probing questions and they coaching them to get their own answers. Sometimes we consult. Yeah. Of, yeah. If I was in your shoes, I'd be doing the following things. Sometimes we mentor. Yeah. I've been down this road. These are the mistakes I've made. And that's quite frankly how I created my, my uh, uh, consulting practice. I yeah. set up a company horribly. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to create a profitability consulting firm and just tell clients, don't do what I did. Yeah, yeah. Faster. 
<laughs> it was. I mean, uh, literally, it was. It was a disaster. You know, it didn't start out that way. It started out to be a great idea, but I made so many mistakes because I got cocky. It was yeah, my sixth yeah. business, and I thought I was bulletproof. Yeah. You know, we get to yeah. that point. It's like, hey, I got this covered. I can do this. Yeah. No problem. I, my, my, I don't speak the primary language of my customers. <laughs> what does that matter? You know, <laughs> I got this. You got this. Yeah. That's great. Eight dollars later. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> That's great. Um, you know, and and then the accountability, which which, which I love. You know, it, it's you can really make it quite simple if you can get a client to just outline to you what they need to accomplish every day and report that into you, you hold them accountable, man, you can make major shifts. Oh, it's life changing. And you know, I use, so you can use, there's coaches for like how to write a book or developing a writing uh, practice or being anything you want to be consistent in working out. Uh, I do productivity, but anything. So, I mean, I believe so much in this. I hired one of the writing coaches on there because I'm trying to write right now. And uh, it's hard, man. If that's not part of your daily routine, it's freaking hard for me to sit down and write without somebody being to be accountable to. I mean, it changes everything. So I, uh, I believe in it like intensely. I believe in coaching and I believe in uh, the power of habit and I believe in developing routines and I believe in being clear. And, you know, I mean, half the time people you know, struggle with procrastination. It's just because they don't know what the heck they want to do. If they knew what they wanted to do, they could sit down and do it half the time. Yeah. So, uh, no, nah, it's, uh, you know, I've even, I've heard you mention, uh, uh, what did I hear you mention about, uh, uh on the last, uh, I just listened to a show that you made a really good point. Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Uh, gosh, uh, I don't know. We'll come back to it. Right. It'll pop back in. Well, thank you. I'm glad somebody thinks I made a good point. <laughs> you make lots of good points, man. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it, it, it's interesting. And, and I want to touch on this a little bit because, you know, the coaching space is, is I, I don't know because I'm in it now, but it feels like everybody and their mother is a, uh, is a coach now, or if it just become, has become that popular. Um, but it, it amazes me the amount of coaches that are out coaching business coaches that have their own business business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, they don't even look like they may, you know, they're old enough to make it out of college yet. It's, you know, you need some experiences along the way. I mean, based on my, I don't want to say my knowledge, but my maturity or my life experiences at this point, it becomes so much, uh, quicker, easier. You see things even before they start to develop. I, I was working with uh, just a friend of mine this morning and I'm doing a fitness show in eight weeks. I'm doing a oh, okay. fitness show. It's kind of my account. Cool. I always want to figure out how to get better. Cool. And so she uh, emailed, she said, when's the event, you know, down in Miami, I told her the date and she's like, Oh, I'm going to attend. I said, well, are you just going to attend? Are you going to watch life? Or are you going to do it? She's ah, like, okay. she goes back in my 20s and 30s. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're almost dead now. She's 50, right? So she's like, what do you mean I'm almost dead? I'm like, well, why don't you fill out the registration form and come? So she's That's like, great. these excuses of, you know, oh, I got to put on my That's great. That's lame excuse number one. That's lame excuse number two. And I knew with this particular woman, all I had to do is challenge her. Okay. Uh, because everybody's different, right? Some, some yeah. women don't respond well to challenge. Uh, but I knew she would, and I just pushed her and pushed her. And then I posted on Facebook, on my Facebook page, you can see it, Thor, uh, Thor Randall Conklin. Um, I went, I said, you know, a friend of mine is thinking about doing this, but she's got a bunch of excuses and I know I'm a business coach, but you know, sometimes I'd like to hear some, from Facebook. Oh, that's great. Give me some ideas of what I should tell her. And of course the only person I tagged was her, right? That's great. So I, I listed out all of these excuses. And she writes back on Facebook a reply about five minutes later. That's it. I'm in. <laughs> That's great. I'm like, That's that was great. so e that was even that wasn't even difficult. You know? I know what I was gonna say that you mentioned. You said, hey, get an accountability partner or a coach or something to help you out. Or if you can't afford it, post what you're going to do yeah. on social media. That was, that's it. I mean, that's it. That'll do the trick, baby. Yeah. I post all my clients since I'm hounding them every day about their top three priorities. 
they ask me, I get asked all the time, nonstop, Matt, what are your top three priorities for the day? <laughs> <laughs> like nonstop. So I just, I stopped responding within the app and I just post it in Twitter every day because I was getting asked yeah. enough that uh, I just started posting on Twitter and it, it totally works. I mean, I totally like me having a uh, accountability partner. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, we're, we're, we're business coaches. I have a business coach. Uh, I have a nutrition coach. I have a um, training uh, coach. I used to have a triathlon coach. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to do anything excellent, you find yourself a coach. Oh yeah, that outside counsel is huge, isn't it? What, what what are some of the things if you were going to counsel and advise some of the coaches out there? What are some of the mistakes that you see, and what advice would you have for the business coaches out there? Oh, I don't know, man. That's tough. I mean, I don't, um, I, obviously I play in this space because I work my butt off and try to get clients, but I'm not evaluating the market too much. Um, from what I would say, I mean, from what's been very successful to me, cause I see a lot of coaches struggling financially. Um, and I would just say like, don't be afraid to give out your best stuff. I mean, like, get a po like I have two podcasts. I talk, I basically share exactly what I would share one-on-one -on -one with clients. Um, you know, I and would why, say, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Why, why two? What, what, what prompted that? Well, the first, the first podcast is the goal achievement podcast. So that one's kind of my baby. And I've had that for uh, quite a while now. And then the CEO and founder of coach.me, the coaching platform that I use, yep. uh, he, is also a publisher of something called Better Humans. And that was strictly written. It was a, it's a medium publication. And he asked me if I could own the podcast. So it's done in collaboration with Better Humans, but would I interview the authors of Better Humans specifically about their articles? Mm. And um, so that's, uh, that's, how I got that's that. So yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a, uh, yeah, it's been amazing. And so I've used that to, uh, I mean, my podcast has been my lead generation, you know, I mean, for me, that's how I, you know, that's how I make my living, man. Like I would not be able to have my coaching business and have leads flow in the way they do without sharing everything that I share on the, uh, cause people still want personalized advice. They still want to connect one-on-one. -on -one. So you know, I mean, I've heard you, you do some amazing like episodes where, um, you just did one posted one a couple of days ago about like checking in on your goals on like the last Wednesday of the month or something like that. And, uh, I mean, that's free advice, but it's damn good advice. Like that was great advice. And it's the same thing you tell a client probably identical. <laughs> and, and it took three decades to kind of dial that thing in, but it just, it's just a system now. And all you got to do is follow, everybody wants to create or tweak things. And, and I, I was like this. It's like, all right, so that's good, but what can I do to tweak it? Just find somebody getting the great results and just follow and mirror what they do. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I'd say I see weaknesses with coaching now that I, you got my brain going is, um, you know, they haven't articulated what they're going to deliver very well. Like generally that's really poor. And when I look at coaching stuff, so, so the customer doesn't know exactly what they're going to get out of the coaching experience, which is a bad thing. Um, two, you know, their pricing is like vague or hard to find or hard to get out of them. Even if you're on a phone call with them, like that's weird because then you feel like you're being duped. Um, and the other thing would just be, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's it. I'd say, yeah, I don't know. What yeah. do you, what would you say? You tell me what you think. Well, I'll tell you one thing about the, uh, what was interesting about the, uh, the, the pricing is we don't do any sort of contracts with our clients. Um, I don't either. Cause I don't want to be in a, I don't want to be in a headbutting situation. Right, right, right. If somebody wants out, out, get out, baby. I want to get you from here to where you want to go. And I want to yeah. get myself out of the middle of that process as quickly as possible. Uh, at least when we're working on on a, uh, a weekly basis, right? So it's and it's like if we get to the end of the month and I'm not delivering, you fire me. It's like you know, 
you're not getting what you want, fire. I, I want satisfied, raving customers. Not that's how I am, man. Absolutely locked into a contract. So th that's number one. And then when we go to a monthly, um, once they've worked with me on a weekly basis, if uh, we're getting the results, they don't need, we don't need to be discussing things on a weekly basis. Then it's like, all right, we'll do a six month, once a month deal. And then- So you dial it back. That's smart. Yeah, I actually yeah. need to and do you that. Know funny? I, I, the way I learned that is because I, we got to a point where it, we got them to where they wanted to be. There wasn't enough to be working on every single week. And it was like- Yeah. Else. So it was like, the team's like, maybe we should- That's smart. Else to have them work. So yeah. So we actually go from- once uh once a week to twice a month to and again you can skip any way you want and you can go backwards and once, right. working once a month and he's like he had some major changes and he's like i want to go in this direction i need some i need some more mm -hmm. dedicated uh, help so he, it, it was flexible sure um the, the biggest mistakes that uh that i see is well god there's there's a there's a lot yeah it was funny even with my my coach um and maybe I'm a difficult one to coach because I know what I'm, what I want. So I'm like, coach, I, I need some help on this. I need you to do this. And it took me like three weeks to get him to just actually do what I wanted him to do. I'm like, no, I need you to ask me these questions in this order, go through this process. I'm, I'm kind of like handing him my, my thing. It's just like, That's when great. I sit here and I ask these questions, I'm not being real, but like when you ask me, it, you know, I, I'm going to give you a different answer. And it, it, right. uh, so I, I think a lot don't listen to what the client is needing, um, what they want and they need. Of course, we know those are two different things. Right. Uh, you know, client wants this, but you know what they really need. So you got to give them right. what they want, but also give them what they need. Yeah. Um, and the other is I just see a lot of recycled uh, material from some of the gurus and um, – a tremendous amount of time and energy spent on the mindset of things, mm -hmm. which is extremely important. But we can sit and meditate and think and get our mind straight in a mm -hmm. corner, and that's a direct path to bankruptcy. You mm -hmm. gotta do shit. You gotta like get out and move. No doubt about it. Yes, yeah. you need the mindset there. Start moving. You want? Yeah. No, you're you're spot on. Yeah. But I'm going to start kicking it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, no doubt about it. I mean, and like with my coaching, you know, I actually tried to, it's interesting to hear you don't have any type of term uh, agreement as I don't on your initial client engagements. I never do. Um, and for the exact same re reason that you say, like you want raving clients of somebody's, you know, not wanting to work with you, then let them go. Yeah. And then uh, the other thing is, uh, God, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I try to get, I'm like the opposite. I must, I, a lot of coaches want like clients forever. I want my client for about 90 days. That's what I shoot for. And then I'm trying to get them out the door. I get bored. I'm ready to go solve new problems. I mean, you know, I, I try to turn, if a client's been with me 90 days, I'll usually bring up to them like, Hey, you know, let's look at maybe, could we change this up in some way? Or do you want to try to do this on your own? Like we're trying to get to someone being um, enabled by themselves, not by a coach. And I know that accountability goes a long way, but ultimately it's great to be able to be accountable to yourself and execute what you need to, you know, outside that coaching relationship. And I have a ton of clients that will work in like 90 day spurts with me, work 90 days, take say 30 to 60 days off and then say, okay, I want this specific project. Will you help me, you know, for 90 more days? And, uh, so I'm kicking people out the door as much as I'm, uh, welcoming new blood in, which seems to be a little different than the industry norm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. We're starting to see a lot of that as well, where past clients are coming back. Um, because quite frankly, I mean, look, there's a reason people do coaching. It works. Mm -hmm. and when they're not having that check-in, they're not having that accountability, they're not having that other perspective. You know, recently a, a client, I asked a client, I, I said, you know, what, what is it? What, why did you choose me? And what 
what is it that I provide for you? And he said, you know, I originally chose you, as you know, because uh, a, a friend of his recommended it. You know, I, I get these phone calls like, I don't know who you are. I know you work with Bob. I don't know what you do. I don't know how much it costs, but I want to hire you. Because if he's using you, I want to use you because I respect him. Yeah. A lot of uh, business comes that way. And he goes, I just wanted to try it for a couple months. He goes, you know, uh, he's one of those guys like, let, let's, let's try something. And he said, he, very, he goes, I very quickly learned that you're asking me the questions that I don't ask myself. Wow, that's good. You see yeah. the things that I don't see. And you walk along the path with me, holding me accountable. And at times, you care more about the outcome than, quite frankly, I do. And that's a partner that I want to have along my side. Oh, um, that's cool. I hand it to my, my uh, team, and I'm like, guys, our marketing, you know, our content is, is off base. I said, this, this is what, and it was funny. We, I went back, and I, I looked at a bunch of other things from, from clients, and I'm like, there's a theme here. Uh, so even as the guy leading the ship, I was missing the messaging coming back from our clients until I asked them. And I think before you jump to conclusions of what's working with your clients, what's resonating with the clients, what do they like, what they don't like, mm -hmm. we spend an awful lot of time guessing instead of asking questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll really start to th see a theme develop. Mm -hmm. I, I always tell clients, I said, at some point in the process, you're going to hate me. And I know that day you hate me is the day I'm doing my job well. That's hilarious. I annoy you. <laughs> I piss you off because that's who I am. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I'll, I'll put my arm around you. I'll, I'll pick you up. But I tell you, you better start moving. Yeah, that's great. No, that's like, great. You know? Yeah, no, it's a, there's a real balance between some clients need nothing but cheerleading and encouragement and some people need nothing but challenged and some need a combination of both and you know it's uh it's interesting it's uh rise to that challenge i mean it's it, it's it's so interesting when you see people just expand and 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 the challenge can come from anything i just onboarded a new client uh, last week and i was at a business conference where i met her i was leading a, a team of about a hundred and I said, what do you want in life? She was talking about her business and she goes, I really want to sing again. I was like, what do you mean you want to sing again? She goes, I used to be a semi-professional singer. I haven't sang in 10 years. I'm like, that's great. Let's go do it. And she's like, yeah, you know, when I get back, I'm good. Uh, uh, what's, what, what's this? Yeah. Like, back. You know, that's great. there's 2,300 people here. Let's start singing. Yeah. I can't do that. I was like, did you just say can't? Uh, don't confuse can't and won't. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, great. Okay. That's cool. I, now I, we're getting somewhere. I, I hold your hand. You know, yeah. I mean, I, and she's like, I don't know what song to sing. I said, I don't care which one it is. Start singing Row, 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 Your Boat. I don't care what it is. Anyway, long story short. Oh, it's great. I yeah. was sang in front of 200 people. She has the most beautiful voice. Oh, that's cool. And a week later, I, I get this incredible email from her saying, you know, Thor, you changed my life because you made me sing. Yeah, Thor, that's so cool. Right? Yeah. But, it's those things where you connect and you break those barriers. She goes, I felt like a, an egg. You broke the shell and now it's time to fly. It, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but even, even in that situation, it goes back to what you've mentioned on other podcasts that I've heard where, you know, you got to have a clarity around your vision. You got to have, you got to know where you're going. And, uh, you know, she was dealing with a bit of procrastination there and you like, you started to line up an actual, like, what song are you going to sing? You know, like those are real concrete things. Like that's how you do stuff. Like it's not magic. No, it's just action. Just, just pick one. Does, doesn't matter. And then just yeah. putting like, you know, so she didn't want to do it, you know, in front of like 200. I'm like, we can go back in and do it in front of 2300. Yeah. That's so funny. Like It's like, just, you put up a wall, you put up another wall, and you just kind of close it down. Like when they lead cattle into slaughter, right? Yeah. It all starts out in this big, nice field, and pretty soon it's down to one little shoot. Yeah, that's great. Back. So that's great. So who is the who's your typical client? It's an entrepreneur, it sounds like. And are you working with teams or the actual person one on one or what? So, so uh, I do some corporate work where I work with entire teams. Um, that's not, that's not the normal uh, engagement. The normal engagement is an entrepreneur with a business between 2 million and 10 million 
Okay. Uh, an entrepreneur that is making at least a half a million dollars in personal income, but has the ability to get to a million. Now, that's not to say I work with people that, you know, quite frankly, are making 150000 Sure. Um, but based on what we do, the level of one-on-one -on -one service and, and the cost of a program, we look at it is if we can't add $350,000 next year to your personal income, uh, that's what we feel the ROI ought to be. And it's tough taking somebody who's making 150 and getting them to half a million. Right. Half a million to 850, an, an easier, uh, easier job. And it, it did start out that way. I, you know, we had no idea who our niche was or, or what, who we wanted to serve or who was going to be attracted to what we did. Um, and it took some time. So it was, it was annoying in the beginning because people were like, what is your niche? I'm like, breathing? You know, I don't know. They have a credit card. Um, so I didn't know because, you know, when, when you have like four clients, it's tough to say what your ideal client is. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 it takes some time. But as you know, you've got to figure out what that core client is because we spend a lot of time talking to the wrong people. And as soon as we find who our tribe is and who we relate to. And one of the other things is for a long time, I thought that women were not going to be attracted to my direct, you know, no nonsense, you know, let's get going. Mm -hmm. um, but I tell you, there's been no difference. Some of our yeah, find the same thing. clients are women that are like, oh my God, I love that authoritative, just tell me what to do and how to do it. Because I think as society, and this is going in a completely different direction. This is going to, as my friend says, going to grandma's house is I think we've, uh, society has feminized um, males uh, as, as a group and they're yearning for that, like just tell me what to do, how to do it, and I'll get it done. Um, because I, just, I thought it would just resonate more with men. And it wasn't like I was trying to do that. It's just who I am. I, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I'm very compassionate, very uh, heartfelt. Um, but man, I, I, I'm not going to settle for BS. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. I, I, thought, responsibility. I thought my coaching would be mostly – uh, kind of geared for men and uh, it hasn't been that way at all. I probably, my podcast is probably about 60% female and my clientele is about 60% female. And um, I love all my clients, but it's been a great, uh, it's been great. I mean, I love, I, my, my wife's an attorney and very driven professionally. My clients are obviously very driven and a lot of type A personality yeah. kind of people are looking for coaching. I mean, but half the time, type A. Half the time, I'm teaching my clients to prioritize leisure time because they're working so hard. Man. Like it's, I mean, a lot of times I'm like, you know, you might be able to do more if you do a little less here. I mean, so I don't look at productivity as when I say I'm a productivity coach. I don't look at it as like you know, work until you're raw, your bones are raw. Like I look at it as like let's actually have a meaningful and purposeful life. And what do you want to be spending your time on? Like the whole idea of like busyness is not a badge of honor at all. Like having clarity and feeling like you're in control of your time and um, you know, feeling like you can dictate your day more than it's dictating you, you know, being proactive, having clarity, having a vision. I mean, that's what I'm going after with my clients and women type a women seem to resonate with that a lot because they're wearing, you know, they're professionals, they're kicking butt at work and they're coming home being mom, being a wife. And, um, you know, I've had some real breakthroughs by just telling clients like, Hey, why don't you prioritize a glass of red wine and reading a book tonight? That might actually help like, you know, lower the cortisol levels a little bit and, you know, uh, help you in all areas. So I've had a lot of, those are actually kind of tough conversations with clients like, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. So I'm um, like, yeah, I know you're, I know you're making 700 K a year, but, uh, have you, uh, relaxed for 10 minutes this week? Yep. I, I just, uh, just this week I had one of my wealthiest clients never has to work again in his life. Just loves to, he loves the game. I mean, he's just all in, uh, got stung by a bee, had an F, F, F uh, something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That can be a big deal. Yeah. Death. Holy cow. Wow. Somebody is. Good news is he had somebody at his house washing his cars. 
Oh, wow. Whoa. Go. Outsource washing your cars. Just wow. Case you might be. Um, <laughs> but you have a hospital said you were two minutes away. It, it had the kid not been there washing the cars, he would have been done. Oh, man. So he had that kid was able to take him to the hospital? That kid was able to take him to the hospital. Yeah, he could. Holy even. cow. Wow. No, that's crazy. Well, called, the, called the ambulance. The ambulance got there. And uh, yeah, they said he would have gone into cardiac arrest. So um, is, is most of your stuff you're driving? You're obviously helping businesses deliver more revenue. You're pretty revenue. Well, uh, so we, the main thing that we focused on is obviously getting people where they want to go. So some clients will show up and they want to figure out how to double their business. Some people, mm-hmm. and again, I don't really care about the top line. We always get that very quickly down into what, what's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. You know, don't become infatuated with the top line. But when it's all said and done, what we're really trying to do, and this, again, some clients come to us for different things, but for the most part, we're trying to get clients out of managing and running their companies to the hmm. point where they can own the business as opposed okay. to having the business own them. Okay. And so you're like the Michael Gerber, like you apply some of his stuff? Yes. Uh, yes. But it's not about the systems. I'm attacking it from, in order to be the owner of a company, you've got to have a badass management team in there running your company. Okay. They yeah. cost a lot of money. In order to afford them, we've got to create the profitability. So let's create mm. the profitability to bring in the team to professionally manage and run the company. We've obviously created some scale. You are now the owner. And if you choose to come in and be the sales rainmaker, or if you choose to come in and be the chairman, great. If you choose to come in and mentor the team, that's great. You can do anything you want to do, but you're not primarily responsible for anything in the firm. Because I don't want to make you more productive. I want to make you to the point where you can do anything at any time, whenever you want. And in order to do that, you can't be managing the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a good, uh, good friend of mine. He said, you know, operators become tired. Mm-hmm. Owners become rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you're spot on. It, but we all have to start off as the manager, right? We all have yeah. to start off with the guy that's, or the girl that's doing everything. Mm-hmm. The problem is too many of us stay there and you mm-hmm. don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to break that cycle of, I, I once used the term uh, entrepreneurial slavery, which I got a whole bunch of kickback and, and, and grief on. How could you equate slavery to entrepreneurship? Um, so I don't know if I was being, you know, wasn't being sensitive, but it, if you're an entrepreneur, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, that you start off with this incredible vision of owning this company and this company providing you the lifestyle of your dreams only to wake up 10 years later in this nightmare of now you have an additional family to take care of in addition Mm -hmm. to your own. And there's just, you're just on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Even what you just said, I mean, to (laughs) go back to it one more time, you said you, if they choose to be this, or if they choose to do that, if they choose to do this, even that goes back to having that clarity and that vision for what you actually want. And it's amazing. Yeah. Not everybody comes to us for that, but there's usually a piece of that because when people really boil it down, you know, make it a ton of money, you know, it's fleeting, you know, have you ever hit this big goal and it's like, yes, I did it. And what does it last? 24 hours, six hours, Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, a lot of times hitting a, a big goal like that, even like when entrepreneurs have huge exits and sell their company or you run that like 50 mile or 100 mile race, a depression follows yeah. Well, yeah. a lot of people like, what's next? yeah, what's next, man? You just like ended your baby. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that's a real thing. I mean, that's something to be aware of if like you're approaching and about to accomplish that big, big goal in your life. Um, be aware of that. People don't see that coming. That's a real thing. Yeah. I, I, I work with a client that hired me for just that basis. A highly, highly successful business uh, person exiting out of his, one of his last companies. And he goes, I've been a businessman all my life. I know how to make money in my sleep. I don't know how to be a human. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know how to do this next stage. Oh, uh, yeah. I need help transitioning from business doer to human being yeah. Uh, yeah and i'm like no i i get you 
And I said, you know, this is going to be tough. And he still hasn't uh, closed or exited everything that he wanted to. And I'm like, oh, yeah. hold it on because it's part of your identity. You're holding on because there's something there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doesn't need a red set. Yeah. Hey, at least he has a, at least he's recognized that. Like you didn't have to point that out to him. You've yeah. got some hope there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, brother, yeah. Uh, we could keep going on for hours. <laughs> I know that you got another uh, appointment. Uh, I've got, I've got another podcast, but I'm the host this on uh, next time. I'm the host. All right. Well, yeah. well good. you got your, you got your voice warmed up. I know you have a book coming out, don't you? Yeah, well, it's not quite, I'm, I'm working on it. So I'm writing it. I'm, I'm, I'm writing it, but, uh, I'm not ready to quite evangelize it quite yet, or I would jump on this opportunity. But uh, man, I'd love to have you on uh, the Goal Achievement podcast sometime and continue you, the conversation. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. You know, you're talking about writing a book, and and I've got several books in me with very little writing ability. So the first book, I decided, you know, let, let's start with little baby steps. So mm -hmm. I actually found a ghostwriter, and they're in the process of creating it. Uh, so in that situation, do they? hunt down stuff that you've like said on the podcast or you just like talk to them and they you're gonna be happy that we talked today what's that you ready you ready for this what's that I think my first pod uh, my first book is gonna be about what what is it your pod first 600 episodes oh cool the transcripts and i said make a book okay that's cool yeah. that's the extent so it's gonna be a book about the greatest ideas that i got from the greatest guests on the show in the first 600 episodes. oh that's a good idea so yeah 600 episodes go ahead and listen or, or read it'll be audio as well sure here's the cliff notes you want to know about sales marketing relationships identity uh mindset yeah uh, psychology you, name it they're all going to be in little chapters each person you know they're going to have their little section there and then i'm like maybe if i went back to all the people that were on the show and I said, I have a book and you're actually in one of the chapters with all of your contact information and the brilliant things you said. Might you tell your audience that you're in the book? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like, this is awesome. great. I don't have to write it. I don't have to market it. That's great. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, that's I great. I stole from uh, uh, Russell Brunson and uh, Tim Ferriss. Yeah, Tim Ferriss did that with Tools of Titans, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's very cool. Yeah, I'm having a... I'm having a blast, uh, like sitting down and thinking through my thoughts. I'm enjoying it much more than I thought I would. So if you ever want to, uh, you know, if you ever sit down to write and you want to chat through what that process has been like, it's, 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 it's been fun and it's, uh, something I'd encourage anyone to do. If, if I ever call you on that and say, I need, I, I want to sit down and write, please send like an assassin. To, uh, to <laughs> That's just, great. I want an intervention. That's I, I bet, yeah, no assassin, just an intervention. Just like Thor, I'm coming to Atlanta. <laughs> and then, uh, just remind me back to this episode and go, dude, really? <laughs> that's, that's great. Oh, man. Well, thanks so much for having me on. I really had fun. And oh, it was uh, great. And uh, I'd love to be on uh, your show. Just send, send me the information. Yeah, yeah. You got it, Thor. Thanks All again. Right. Thanks so much. Have a great one. Yep, you too. Bye.